The earth has his shield, not one of steel and rivets, but an invisible swirling field of planetary scale weirdness generated by a giant angry ball of liquid metal in its core. It's the one thing that separates our perfectly soft, organic lives from the hard, harsh reality that is up there. Deep space. Our shield deflects the solar wind, saves our satellites and keeps our atmosphere from politely packing its bags and drifting off into the void. It's the reason we can breathe. It's the reason we can sleep, or at least try to sleep after just five minutes on TikTok. Five minutes becomes an hour, the hour becomes three, and suddenly it's morning. Oh sh! where did the time go? Never mind. Alexa, what's the weather like today? Alexa? Silence. And no, it's not because we finally achieved AGI and it's decided to overflow humanity. It's because the AI's been turned off. It's been three years since I made that video about the Bermuda Triangle of Space the weak spot in Earth's magnetic field known as the South Atlantic Anomaly. No one really knows why it's changing, only that quiet, persistent thought scratching at the back of our collective mind. What if it's the start of a magnetic field flip? A once in 450,000 year event. Except those three years have passed. No flip. And so we, and by we I mean mankind, but more specifically European Space Agency, not you and me personally, sent up the swarm satellites. Three little spies, Alpha, Bravo and Charlie. And their only job is to measure the angry ball of liquid iron that lives beneath us. And they've sent back the new data, which roughly translates to the cough is now tuberculosis and it's spreading. 11 years of measurements show that the South Atlantic anomaly isn't just a dent anymore, it's humongous. Since 2014, it's expanded by nearly half the size of continental Europe. But sure, let's keep scrolling. I'm sure it'll be fine. And that's where the existential horror sets in, because here we are. A species that split the atom, decoded the genome, made a phone so thin that you can bend it. Yet our entire civilization depends on a spinning ocean of molten iron behaving itself. We are, quite literally, living on a planetary shield powered by a giant prehistoric lava lamp. A lava lamp that's been running every second, every day, for 4.543 billion years straight, non-stop. So yes. Maybe it is on its last legs. But what happens next? Well, I can't say for certain. No one was around 450,000 years ago, or at least no one with a brain cell advanced enough to write it down and relay it back to me. But if I were to speculate, and speculation is after all the entire point of human existence, I'd expect this. Our satellites die. Our civilization isn't built on stone and mortar anymore, it's built on fragile electronics orbiting a few hundred miles above our heads. They're the invisible scaffolding of finance, communication and logistics. And when they're battered by the trillions of cosmic rays that hit Earth daily, well, they just give up. Your GPS starts getting creative, your banking app stops talking to the mothership, you can't access your money, but even if you could, good luck spending it. The automated shipping systems that deliver your cheap plastic tat from halfway around the world have politely broken down. It's not the end of the world, but it is the end of this world. The perfectly digitized, hyper-efficient one we built under the comforting illusion that Earth was done with the whole geological chaos phase. And then the electrical grids fail, because of course they do. A solar storm just erupted, frying the lines. Suddenly there's no Wi-Fi, no screens, no endless scrolling, complete darkness. You have no excuse but to step outside, to actually touch grass for the first time in years. And it's wonderful. The sky is alive, shimmering with auroras that stretch from horizon to horizon. Only, they're not the gentle curtains of light we once called beautiful, they're spectacular planet-engulfing storms, which sounds fun until you remember that radiation is now quietly cooking us alive. This isn't a problem for the moss or the deep sea fish, so if you ever said there are plenty more fish in the sea, well, maybe now's the time to join them. And so that was the start of the technological apocalypse. Maybe 
Just maybe, this is how it goes for every single intelligent species in our galaxy. They build their glittering towers of code and glass, beam cat videos into space, and then one day, the field flips, the sky lights up, and all lights go out. And yet, somehow, we'll find a way to make memes about it. Because that's what we do, isn't it? The sky could be on fire, the oceans could be boiling, satellites could be raining down like digital confetti, and yet somewhere, someone will still post, lol, mood, we're a strange species. We built our entire civilization during a brief period of magnetic calm, the Holocene. And now our planet is merely reminding us that it's still wild, still alive, and entirely uninterested in the price of Bitcoin or who Taylor Swift is feuding with. It's just a gigantic ball of swirling iron. And sometimes, just sometimes, it likes to change its mind. One day, it may just flip. The compasses will spin, the lights will dance, the phones will die. And the algorithms, well, they'll finally stop recommending whatever houseborn content got us here in the first place. And for a brief impossible moment, we'll remember what it feels like to be small. To be part of a planet that's still alive and unpredictable. A giant rock with a lava heart that occasionally reminds us, your guests here. Meanwhile, Thousands of miles below, that slow churning process keeps accelerating. The Earth is giving us warning. And all we can do is check Twitter and ask Alexa for the time. Assuming, of course, Alexa is still online when the shield finally goes silent. And then, once the lights come back on, we'll go right back to scrolling. Because even if the world ends, humanity will still manage to find Wi-Fi somewhere 